it's amazing how many people can play the harmonium exactly as it should be and even more than that even new compositions came on the market and we heard some it's it's a it's outstanding what they could play in their professionalism so what do you think that this implies for someone like you do you think there are going to be more people taking up the instruments and more restoration work oh yes uh, of course professional players would like to have a professional uh, restored instrument mm -hmm. of course some of them say no I only want to have an instrument that is only preserved as it is and we do our best to bring out the best music what is possible but we know deteriorating is existing in all these instruments and one day it will come so it's the choice of the player what he likes or what he wants well this is kind of a classic problem and made worse by the fact that uh, harmoniums are not being made any longer correct so you have to you have to make a decision about what to do there yeah you have to uh, create a program for an instrument and we call that literally ethics in or for or off or with in the restoration and these ethics tells you what is possible and what is possible not to do or what you never have to do but still client is king but lucky I'm not a slave so <laughs> I can make also decisions yes, right, right. two-way street there okay so um, of the instruments that you you heard in this festival uh, can you give a, a rough assessment of what they were you know what they were in their own day and where they are in terms of their restoration and playability currently well there was not one instrument totally restored at this uh, at this uh, big festival because the owners brought their instrument in as good as possible and uh, there are two people who can restore their own instruments and, they, and and one of them is avoiding to do something that is taking away the originality and I I'm agreed till so far but if you are playing uh, the music from those days and you want to hear as it was uh, composed on an instrument that was perfect in those days well there is one day coming you have to do the full restoration to create that sound back as mm -hmm. it was because every instrument we think it sounds like it was in those days no they get little bit by bit back backwards what part uh, what what things age like that what parts of the instrument age like that well that's f the first thing that will always age is the leather in the bellows that's part number one not so specific the reeds because the reeds are made most of these harmoniums are made the reeds are made of brass and which in in a very specific alloy of uh, copper and zinc and it depends on how much and the quality of the 19th century reeds are extremely good so you hardly have to change a reed which is broken it's it's amazingly how good that stuff could stay for yeah, decades mm -hmm. and even from centuries we already notice mm -hmm. so it's the the leather and the felt or cloth that will deteriorate after a while right. but I also have to say one other thing wood especially from the keyboards can warp right. moisture humidity dryness till very dry and that combination that will kill a keyboard and that is also a part you have to bring back in its original position with heat so in that sense yeah there are a few parts you have to see that 100 years is most of the time a border in that you have to do something at least but that's a lot of uh, well the builders of those days never thought their instruments will stay forever. Right. We can see 
Some of them can stay forever, but still they need work. That's it. The other thing that uh, I think people don't know is that if you don't have a well-restored instrument uh, that's working properly, the person performing, no matter how, how much they may know and how, how much they play well, essentially, if the instrument isn't working properly, especially I think with the harmonium, you cannot do the things that need to be done in, in the performance. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's true. Um, um, I gave that already. An instrument is deteriorating. And first is the leather in the ballot system, felt, cloth, if that is deteriorating or eaten by bugs, well, you have to. Wood can be eaten by bugs too, uh, the mm. woodworm, for instance. So, you always know there could be something, but an instrument is stepping back after 50, 60, 100 years. It's going in backwards because wood is shrinking, mm -hmm. swelling or shrinking. So the combination of is the wind system closed, uh, are the are the seals good working? If wood is shrinking, the seals could be perfect, but there's always a leakage because there is no pressure in the system anymore. So yes, you if you want to bring the instrument in a perfect sound by playing it and give the music its its form, its sound back. Yeah, one day you have to restore, and restore means bring it back to its original as much as possible. Use original materials, the same materials, or old materials who are still in a very good condition. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to the reeds, uh, something that's of course been going on in recent years, certainly more than recent years, is this constant raising of the pitch of A. Yeah. And this is controversial, uh, but it, the harmonium can be retuned up. But what is your opinion about this raising of the pitch? Um, well, we have to look back what happened in the 19th century about the reeds. Uh, they have tuned in those days. Uh, to give a few examples, uh, a François Dubus harmonium from 1840, a two manual, which was in those days uh, totally not usual, a two manual, that was extraordinary. And that was in a pitch of 440. I, w I could see nobody have retuned or revoiced that instrument during my restoration. I kept the reeds totally original in it. I didn't do anything with the reeds, then only cleaning. I put them back and I was listening to the tuning and I said, this is incredible. The first four octaves are perfectly, but the last octave is a little bit out of tune. So I kept it in out of tune. That's what we call uh, a preservative method mm -hmm. for the reeds, mm -hmm. but it was 440. Hmm. Another instrument from the band from 1846, 446 hertz. Then we found an Alexandre from 1849, 447. Keep on going. This and what then happened is I found a Kelly from 1869, I had to restore 452. Uh, all A, eh? A. Uh, then several de bands from the 60s, from the 19th century, all 435 hertz, many mustels also, but what we saw that 435 hertz and all the other hertzes I told, they didn't tune at that pitch, 435 or, yeah, 435 they did. But most of these instruments, when we uh, listen to their tuning now, they are 438. So we know that metal can raise in its pitch. 
during playing, a while you don't play and then you play again and the whole range of reeds is lifting up itself in pitch. That has to do with the hardness of the reeds and the internal uh, uh, the internal, uh, yeah, there is a word for it, but I cannot find it directly, but it's the in internal of the molecule of the reed, of the metal. Mm -hmm. Especially the combination, how much copper and how much zinc. So we have seen that when Mason and Hamlin started uh, his reed organs to put on an international pitch 435 his instrument still stay or 435 in pitch in 1920 and 1922 they started with 440 orchestras did like to have that raise up from reeds is always it's a difficult story it's a lot of work especially in a harmonium in a reed organ it's simple you can pull them out and pull him and push him back but in a uh, harmonium you have to unscrew them put them on a voicing jack and bring them back and then do the final tuning in the harmonium itself which is a lot of work so the the pitch which came up higher and higher for instance the celesta is an instrument that can which is a very good uh, instrument to uh, have as a reference from periods. The first celesta built by the most famous uh, harmonium builder, Victor Moustel. His son invented it, but it came under his name on the market in 1886. A celesta is never changing in pitch. So if you have a two-manual Moustel with the celesta and the harmonium, you know right away what has happened with the harmonium. Right. but not with the celesta. Yeah. So the celesta is your reference what was the original pitch. Mm -hmm. Moustel built uh, celesta still, yeah, we can say till the sef late 70s, mm -hmm. but somehow we know they built several others later, but we can say till in the 70s and they raised them up till 442. But in the end, of the keyboard in the key range you have to stretch yeah because that because your ear says now it's nice but uh, a voicing machine tells you it's wrong right. but the ear so you know the first three octaves you know exactly what was the pitch from those days and in the 50s and 50s they started already to raise the celesta but the real one came in the 60s for sure, 442. So, and we know that Leipzig Gewandhaus Orchestra, I have heard they even like 444. Oh, but that is what I have heard. I, I've been in there many times, but I did not check. So therefore I can say, uh, the high pitch is not so easy because there are no new reeds. <coughs> if you break a reed you have to find a spare on another spot.